Hey, good evening. It's uh, Wednesday, March 6th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. Just a quick reminder, if you have a couple questions, you still have time to send them in. If uh, we have a few questions, we'll have to come in a Friday, this Friday, if not the next week. So send those in, eager to get them. We're going to continue looking at Paul's theme here in Ephesians of knowing God better. Since Paul states that's the purpose in the first chapter, I think it's very helpful to read Ephesians the way Paul wants us to understand it. He wants us to know God better in all the things that we do. So that's what we've been looking at. Picking up where we were last night in chapter 4, we saw that we need to speak the truth and love to each other so that we are built up so we can become mature and not unstable in this world where everything is tossing around back and forth. And that's exactly where our culture is. We can't be sure of anything anymore. We believe one thing, then we believe another thing, whether it's diet, whether it's um, the way we do government, the way that we look at marriage, the way we look at sexuality, the way that we look at what is important. Just across the board, everything is in flux. That's what happens when we're not centered on speaking the truth and love to each other and building each other up through the work that God has called us to do. That's what happens. One thing that we all have as people, and and this is the portion for tonight, one thing that we all have is desires. And the word for desire in the New Testament is a colorless word. In other words, it depends upon the context. Jesus had desires. They were good desires. But sadly, we can have desires that can also be very ugly and turn into lust. So the title of the of the video tonight is When Desires Become Lust. And Paul warns us about that. When we fail to speak the truth of one another, to one another in love, then we set ourselves up to live like the world does. So listen to what Paul says here in verses 17 through 19 of chapter 4 of Ephesians. Paul says this, so I tell you that <clears throat> I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live or walk like the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You see, our desires turn into lust if we're not focused on knowing God more deeply. Let me state that again. Our desires will turn into lust if they're not focused on knowing God more deeply. And that's what we see played out here. Paul says, when we fail to build each other up, to be concerned about the things of God, to do His work, then we start living like the Gentiles do, or walking in their ways, in their paths, in their mindset. What that happens then is that leads to a futile life. Futility. That's what the passage says in, in, um, at the end of verse 17. When we walk like the Gentiles do, we experience the futility of their thinking. They cry and grasp something, and when they grasp it, it's gone. That leads to their hearts being darkened. This is verse 18. And then when that happens, they become separated from the life of God, what God's called them to do, which is to know Him better. Then their hearts become hard. And our hearts, if, if we follow that, we will become hard not being soft to the things of God, but being hard-hearted, because our desires now begin to dominate us. When they dominate us, then we see this in, in, uh, I'm sorry, in verse 19. We lose all sensitivity. Sensitivity means, I care about you. What we do then, when we lose sensitivity, is that we gain sensuality. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality. 
Sensuality means I care about me. So if I'm a sensual person, it's not just about meaning stuff that's wrong and sexually impure. It is. But sensuality means I care about me more than anything else. My desires become me-focused rather than God-focused. If I'm sensitive, my desires become God-focused and not about me. But lust comes in when I become me-focused. So whatever it is, whether you have a desire for music, your work, your um, the sports, whatever leisure activity you may be involved in that you enjoy, it could be hiking, it could be any number of things, all good things on certain levels. But when they become the focus, then that desire for a good thing can turn into lust for a bad thing. So notice what Paul says here. Having lost all sensitivity, they've given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. This is where substance abuse comes from. This is where pornography comes from. This is where greed comes from. This is where a hunger for power comes from. I care only about myself. I've become lusting after these things. And I can't shut it down, as the, as the verse says. There's always a continual desire to have more. I'm never satisfied. Does it not so clearly picture the age that you and I live in right now? We can never satisfy our desires. Our lusts are never satisfied. Whether it's the dark world of pornography or whether it's just trying to chase your dream so you can have what you want. A desire, which could be a good thing, if it's the desire is to know God better in whatever activity that I do. Once I lose that, that's sensitivity. But once I lose that, I become sensual. I'm open to substance abuse, and I turn to substance, no matter what it is. I turn to substances, whether mild or hard, quote-unquote. I'm running from God when I turn to that. I was never satisfied. But Paul says, and we'll look at this tomorrow, Paul says, in contrast to what the Gentiles do, those people who don't know God, he says, you did not come to know Christ that way. You did not learn about Christ that way. It's a unique phrase in the Greek there, where we're actually learning a person. We're learning Christ. We're knowing him. And that's the security that we have. If I'm given over to knowing Christ in all of my activities, not just church stuff, but everything that you do, your occupation, your work, your free time, all of that. If I'm given over to loving Christ and knowing him more deeply, I'm protected. But if, if not, then I let my desires run rampant when they turn into lust. They're never satisfied. And that's how desire can become lust. And if we're not fully given to knowing Christ, we will be consumed by lust. That's what Paul's telling us about here. And then he goes on in the rest of the chapter, we'll be looking at that, about how we can combat these things. But this is important. Don't let your desires turn into lust. Let your desires lead you to know Christ more deeply. And that's the thought for this night. Thanks so much for being here, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. You have a great day. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.